Welcome to r slash relationships, where OP's boyfriend basically says, You know what? I think I'm just gonna let my girlfriend die. Our next Reddit post is from Snoo Pets. I was at a bar with my boyfriend and his friends a while ago. We all had a great time, dancing on tables, singing, and drinking. I remember feeling totally fine one second, and the next, I got very unsteady and I lost connection with my body. I got confused and scared, but then I just got so calm. It was all types of weird. I became unconscious, and according to my boyfriend, the few times I opened my eyes, they looked very scared. He was told to get a taxi and get me to the emergency room fast. He managed to get me into a taxi and we all left together. My boyfriend told me that during the drive, the driver told him that he would have to pay an extra 200 bucks if I threw up. Then my boyfriend said, F no, stop the driver and wanted to walk to the emergency room. I was still unconscious and he didn't know what was wrong with me. Luckily for him, the police was driving around and saw me laying on the ground. They asked him what was up and they drove us to the emergency room with blue lights on and fast. The cops took it very seriously and without them, my boyfriend would have been lucky to even get me to the emergency room. Turns out, I got drugged that night. It got worse after he forced me to walk with shaky legs from the emergency room the day after. The walk should have been 20 minutes, but it took two hours. He even started talking about the fact that he could have gotten drugged too, and that maybe he got a little bit drugged, even though he didn't feel weird at all that night. Then he started talking about him paying 40 bucks for the taxi drive and how much money that was. Like he wanted me to pay him back or something? He constantly said that it was 40 bucks and how awful that was. He looked up symptoms related to being drugged and found that long-term symptoms would mostly be trauma. The next weekend, I had to be with his friends again and some people that I didn't know. They talked about that night and even made a few jokes about me being drugged. They weren't too bad, but I felt awful. He also ignored me once when I said someone was following me. He was never scared of letting me walk around in town at night but if a female friend did it, then he would have to follow her. He argues with me when I'm scared instead of making me feel better or protecting me. Other than that, he's a kind man who doesn't want to hurt people, but like, this cannot be normal. Is this relationship worth it? I'm scared of overreacting, but keep in mind that most of this is told from his perspective, as I don't remember that night. OP, uh, I'd actually say you're lucky because it's pretty rare that your partner shows you how they really value you so early, and this guy is clearly showing that, to him, you're worth less than $200. So if I were in your shoes, I would just pay him the 40 bucks that he thinks that you owe him just to have a clean break and move on with my life. Honestly, it sounds like the guy doesn't even think you're worth $40 either. I often hear from women that one of the main things they look for in a man is someone who makes them feel safe, but this guy does the exact opposite. He's literally a liability because when you're unconscious, when you're 100% dependent on him, he wants to what? Drag you to the hospital walking instead of getting a taxi? This guy's, I don't know what's up with this guy OP, but you should definitely leave this relationship. The title of the next post is, My wife cheated on me two years ago, and we decided to stay together, but now I think that I made a mistake. Two years ago, my wife cheated on me while on a work trip. She was enjoying a night out with some colleagues when she met a guy and hooked up with him, but they didn't passionately hug. I'm sure they didn't actually passionately hug, because her company is very strict about bringing anyone to the rooms when someone is on an official trip. They could lose their jobs. She confessed the next morning and we did some counseling and finally we decided to reconcile. Then the COVID lockdown hit and the whole world turned upside down, but we kept reconciling. Here I am two years later, thinking that I made a mistake. Don't get me wrong, she's been the model spouse the whole time and we didn't drive each other mad during the lockdown, so that's something. But lately, I've been getting the feeling that I'm living a lie. From getting up in the morning to going back to sleep during the night, I'm playing a role. I feel like I'm wearing a mask of someone else, and the real me is lost somewhere. I don't know if I'm making sense right now. I guess I just needed to get it off my chest. OP, um, this is pretty straightforward. You're allowed to change your mind. Yeah, you decided to reconcile in the past, but after two years of reconciling, it seems like it's just not working. So if I were you, I would move on. 
Also, I have to wonder if the reason why you're feeling so doubtful about this is because your rationale for why she didn't actually cheat on you was because it's against company policy to bring a guy back to your room. So even if that's true, there's nothing saying they didn't hook up in the bathroom or in the alley or wherever. But even then, like your wife's already proven that she's the type of person to violate marriage vows, so why do you think she cares about company policy? Our next Reddit post is from Omahaman Alal. I'm a 39-year-old man, and my daughter, Emma, is 18. My first wife and I were middle school sweethearts. Emma was a happy accident, and we were thrilled to be parents to her. But my wife died while giving birth to her. I had just graduated and started a job, and I failed to juggle a kid and the career. So I remarried in a year and a half to my second wife, Sam. She was also struggling to raise her kid, Tom, due to financial difficulties. It was a marriage of convenience, and we were very open about that. She would stay at home raising both kids while I'd be the financial provider. There were ups and downs along the road, but we made it work. Sam always gave her son preferential treatment emotionally, which I never took issue with. After all, Emma is my daughter, not hers. But I always provided equally for both of the kids, because I always felt obligated to be fair with both of them. There weren't any major issues growing up. Both kids maintained a healthy relationship with each other while maintaining a bit of distance between them. Both cared for each other, and we never asked for more. My first wife and I both had an insurance policy. It was paid out when she died. For some reason, we once randomly talked about what we would do with the money if one of us passed away. We both decided that it would go to our kids, and if we didn't have a kid, then the surviving spouse should travel the world. I've kept that money in a trust, and it's grown over the past 17 years and has been yielding significant profits. And now, it's quite a bit of money. I have never borrowed even a penny from it because it belongs to my daughter and I'm just a guardian. This year, both kids applied to college, and Emma got into Ivy League with a full scholarship. Our plan was that if Emma didn't get a scholarship, I'd pay her tuition with the trust. Tom also applied to Ivy League, and he got admitted, but without scholarship. Tom and I both discussed our options, and I told him that while I can help him with living expenses while he pursues his studies, I can't afford the tuition without taking a massive hit. He was understanding and said that he'd take out a loan. It was settled, or at least I thought it was. One night, Sam asked me if I could pay for her son's tuition with the payout. She knows how much money I have. I was surprised for a second, but I said that I'd think about it. I delayed it, because I wanted to ask Emma whether she wanted to help Tom out, because I've always let her make decisions on her own, as I feel that it's an important part of parenting. I wanted to ask her alone without Sam's presence, because Sam can be a bit pushy, and I wanted Emma to make a decision on her own without any pressure, because she's the sweetest kid who would rather be hurt than hurt anyone else. I explained the whole thing to my daughter and asked what she wants to do. She asked me what I think she should do, and I told her that I have no opinion, but whatever decision she makes, it will not change anything between us. She'd always be my world. She told me that she wanted to use half the money to travel the world with me, the way that her mom wanted, and for the other half, she could invest it so she could have an extra cash flow. She asked me to give her the weekend so that she could think about it, and I was happy to give it to her. After the weekend, she asked me to explain the finances in detail, which I did. After contemplating, she decided that she would pay for half of Tom's tuition. Also, she would travel the world while maintaining a healthy cash flow. I stressed to her that if she doesn't want to do this, she doesn't have to. Tom is not her responsibility but she said that she wants to help her brother out. During a family meeting, Emma revealed her decision to Tom in front of Sam and me. Tom teared up and hugged her and was very grateful. I noticed Sam was a bit off, but I ignored it. We all went out for dinner. Later, in bed, Sam asked me who made the decision about Tom's tuition. I told her the whole story. Sam was shocked for whatever reason. She said that I didn't have to ask Emma and I could have made the decision on my own because it wasn't Emma's money. I told Sam as plainly as I could that she does not get a say in what happens with this money. Then she asked me why I didn't involve her in this discussion with Emma. By this time, I was on edge and I said, because it's none of your damn business. She said that she would talk to Emma and Emma should pay for her brother's full tuition and traveling the world wasn't necessary. I calmly yet firmly told her that she would not say a word to Emma about this and the matter was closed. 
After a week, I was out with my colleagues when I received a text from Tom that I should come home immediately. I rushed home. Sam was shouting at Emma about how she should pay for Tom's tuition, and Emma was crying. Tom was trying to calm his mother down and get her to shut up, but to no avail. I told my wife to shut up and go to the bedroom as politely as I could because I did not want to insult her in front of Tom, because after all, she was his mother. I picked Emma up and was taking her to her bedroom when I heard Sam yell, You were always a monster! You killed your mother while coming into this world! This was the last straw. I told Sam that I was going out and I'd be back in two days, and when I'm back, she had better be gone. I took Emma with me, and I asked Tom if he wanted to come with me too. Tom was reluctant, but eventually came with us. I drove to a nearby town and got us checked in. Emma was crying the whole way. The next morning, when we met to have breakfast, Emma's eyes were swollen from crying. Tom basically got on his knees and apologized for his mother's behavior. Emma told Tom that it wasn't his fault. I talked to Emma privately and reassured her that she wasn't responsible for this. Then, the three of us had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion where Emma still agreed to pay for half of Tom's tuition. I also talked to Tom and told him that I'd be divorcing her mother because there was no turning back from that. But that doesn't have to change my relationship with him unless he thinks otherwise. I asked him to consider my position and whether he thought what I was doing was unfair. He said no and that he understood. By the time we got home, my parents were already there and Sam was gone. My parents asked about what had happened and apparently Sam had fed them this big lie. They were furious, but they tried to calm people down and ask if there was a way to make amends. I told them my decision was final. I served Sam with divorce papers, which includes a fair amount of alimony as well as a one-bedroom apartment. This is despite the fact that we signed a prenup, which doesn't require me to give her alimony. In the meantime, our relatives and friends have been asking me to reconsider it, because while they don't condone what happened, they want me to make space for her. Sam has reached out to Emma and apologized for her behavior. Emma has asked me to reconsider my decision as she's forgiven Sam, and she feels like there won't be any friction since she's already left for college. I am not willing to roll over, because whatever affection I had for Sam is gone. I don't think it'll ever be the same if we get back together. And there's no changing the fact that I've lost feelings for her. So I'm asking Reddit for objective and impartial advice. What do I do here? OP, honestly, I don't really think there's much to do at this point. The marriage is over, your relationship is over, the kids are out of the household, so the main reason why you married her in the first place is irrelevant. Did you even love Sam in the first place, or was it just pure, 100% logical convenience? Because if you didn't love her before, and you don't love her now, then why get married? What's the point? Where's the logic? I say just move on, OP, and you deserve a pat on the back, because it sounds like you've raised an amazing young woman. Our next Reddit post is from Throwaway Broken Wife. I'm a 41-year-old woman, and my husband, who's 52, has a second family on the side. I've been sitting with this information for almost two weeks now, and I still don't know how to proceed. My husband has been in what seems like a committed relationship with another woman, and he's playing happy family with her and her three sons. They're even planning on having a baby! A week ago, I stumbled on a TikTok account of this lady sharing her recipes, and in the background, I recognized my husband's back. I wasn't too sure at first, but after taking a real good look, as his wife, I know that fool's neck, back, legs, and the clothing he was wearing. So I went through this lady's other videos to piece together confirmation that it really is my husband. I continued to keep an eye on him and his movements, but he seemed normal. It's clear to me now that he has his cheating down to a science. Every time he went on one of his work trips, this woman would post these videos saying that she's cooking a new recipe because her man is coming back from his work trip. She'd plate the food up, and I'd recognize his grubby hands by their look and the way that he holds the cutlery. He has a peculiar way of holding cutlery. He kinda looks like a Neanderthal discovering forks and knives. I can't believe this bastard has been with her for over three years. I don't know how he found the time to start an entire relationship on the side. I thought that we were happy. He tells me he loves me all the time. He always brings me a gift from his work trips. When he's home, we have a great love life and pretty much passionately hug four to six times a week. We talk all the time. We've been married for 21 years and we have two daughters. 
We lost our oldest son 10 years ago, but we worked through it and got closer more than ever before. We're even due to have our 22nd anniversary, and it's his turn to plan the celebration. I know that he's been planning an elaborate party for us. So why is he cheating? I'm so angry, and I don't know what steps to take. I am utterly distraught. I thought that we were happy. I thought that he loved our little life. Then, about one month later, OP posted an update. I've been able to engage the services of a great divorce lawyer, and I was advised to not let my husband know that I knew of his affair. I was then finally given the go-ahead a few days ago, and, well, at first he refused to admit to anything, but I was prepared for that. I showed him all the online posts that his mistress made. I also showed him pictures taken by my investigator. He still denied it. Then he accused me of being insane. Then, after hours of me just throwing evidence after evidence at him, he finally admitted to the affair. He tried to twist things so that he could weasel and lie his way out of it, but I was relentless. I didn't let him twist reality and make me doubt the plain truth. We argued all day and all night. It was exhausting. The next morning, he tried to get on my good side because I woke up to him having made breakfast and he was begging me to not hate him and to find it in my heart to forgive him. I told him that I could not do that and that I wanted a divorce. That brought on the waterworks and he called me heartless and an unforgiving B-word. He then left to take things to his parents' house because I had to ask him to leave. While he was at his parents' house, I went to his mistress's home. My sister went with me, and, well, the mistress let me in, and we talked. She wasn't even surprised that I was there. She was actually gloating when she told me about how in love he is with her, how good he is to her boys, and how he bought her the house, the car, and all the money he'd spent on her. She told me that if I wasn't such a lazy B-word and a gold digger, then he wouldn't have been so easily taken, and how my lack of submission and servitude was the reason that he cheated. I don't know how she's calling me a gold digger because I work and earn more than she does. As she was flapping her gums, he arrived and he was pissed off at her. They argued because he told her not to speak to me like that. And he told her in no uncertain terms that he wants to be with me and that she's ruining his chance of saving his marriage. I just thanked her for being forthcoming and continued to laugh my way out of the house because, yeah, my husband makes great money. But as his business partner, I own half of his business. And as his wife, I own half of his other assets too. So I'm glad that she gloated and that she confirmed that he paid for most of what she has. Now I know for certain that he nor she deserve an ounce of my sympathy. And I'll take back everything he ever gave her and much, much more. Man, I don't know what's crazier, that someone has the time, energy, and money to raise two whole families, support two wives, five kids, and buy multiple houses, or that this guy's affair got blown up by a cooking TikTok. That was r slash relationships, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.